Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, California Weather Watch. Today is April 13th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery, and you can see that we are not dealing with much precipitation across the state. We did have some breezy conditions here, the low pressure system moving by. We'll also take a look at some of the snowpack across the area today. We'll look at some charts on that, and then we'll take a look at the extended forecast as well. We'll see if there's a warm up inside here. We'll see what kind of precipitation chances we're going to have as we go through the extended forecast here in a moment. And now the code has changed for this. If you want a nice affordable home weather station you want 10 percent off click on the link down below it throws the channel here a couple bucks very accurate station here all solar powered no batteries all the data stored for you on the cloud and it's got lightning detection it's got an ultrasonic anemometer uv and solar radiation sensor very nice station i'm very impressed with it so now looking at california snow water content and you can see that for the central and southern we have record amounts of snow water equivalent across the area here and you can see about when the snowmelt starts to occur. So as we start to get into May, you'll notice that decline. But however, look at that 82, 83 max there. That snowmelt held on all the way in through the month of May here. But for the most part, we should start to expect to see some melting start to occur here as we go towards the end of April and on into May. Best case scenario, we're probably going to have some rapid melt off occurring during the month of May here, but you can clearly see how we are above that 82 to 83 all time record max across a lot of the Southern Sierra and even the Central Sierra here is in record territory and the Northern area is still up towards it as well with that pinnacle year there, 82 to 83. Now this is looking at snow water equivalent. We've dropped down a little bit here, but we haven't started that rapid snow melt just yet. 321% of normal snowpack here across some of the southern, 241 across central, and just over 200% for the northern Sierra. Now this is looking at northern Arizona here. You know, there's more snow across some of Nevada, Arizona, Utah as well. So it's starting to melt off here. So just have a heads up. We're starting to get some flooding concerns with that activity. This is a dangerous fire weather. So windy conditions moving across some of Arizona there as well. So you can see risk level three to five. Nice graphic here from the National Weather Service, Tucson, Arizona. Some red flag warnings out there for that fire danger. This is looking at the wider view of things. You can see that you've got the Hawaiian Islands. Here's Washington, California. If we put it into motion. Let's see what's coming in here. So we've got a weak system moving through the Pacific Northwest. Not much for California, but then we get a stronger system start to bear down on the Pacific Northwest this afternoon. And this troughing may start to bring some activity through the uh, northern half of California here and this could bring some mountain snow with it as well as it moves through the area not much for Southern California showing up here through mid next week and some more additional strong storms moving into the Pacific Northwest here but not much on the radar for California except for that one system and this would be about let's back up a little bit here so start impacting northern california as you go on in through sunday night into monday morning and then eventually down through central california as you go on in through tuesday afternoon now here we're looking at total precipitation in inches this is last night's european run this goes out 144 hours and you can see it's bringing some decent amounts to northern california and some of the sierra nevada mainly central and northern uh, California shown there. So here we go. Uh, total snow. This could bring another round of snowfall to some of the Sierra Nevada. Again, nothing like what we have been seeing this, uh, you know, spring and uh, winter and spring, but it could bring another round here. So we're not totally done with some of the snowfall, mainly central and northern Sierra and some of the Siskiyous out here in the coastal range. This is looking at 850 millibars. This is up towards 5,000 feet. We've got the European model on the left. We've got the GFS model on the right. The state of California shown. Put it into motion, and you see that chilly trough here that's over the area now. Then we get a bit of a warm-up showing up in some of the models here as we go through this weekend. As the system moves into the Pacific Northwest. However, that doesn't last too long. We get another trough kind of deal, uh, remaining over the area. Pretty good agreement here through hour 150 or so between the European on the left and the GFS on the right for below average temperatures as we go on in through next week. And then we get some model disagreements start to show up. The GFS shows below normal temperatures existing as we move towards the end of April here and the Europeans starting to show some of the warm up here, you can see the big differences between the models coming up here. So right now we have low confidence in what is coming. But of course, as you guys know, we've been talking about this for the last several weeks, a lot of snow water equivalent across the higher terrain there. It's a lot of potential energy, a lot of potential flooding. So if we warm up rapidly, we really need to, you know, have our guard up for that. Uh, and you can see big model of disagreement as we go. 
But looking at current reservoir conditions, of course, you know, you, you have to have the water. You can't live without it. We're just kind of crossing our fingers that we war don't warm up too quickly here across the region. But look at Shasta now, up to 90% of its reservoir capacity there and 111% of its historical average. And this is looking at something released today. This is El Nino probabilities. And you can see we are now dealing with 80 plus percentile uh, probabilities here for El Nino conditions to develop as we go through the summer and on and through the fall and winter months coming up here. So we are increasing confidence in El Nino coming. We still don't know for sure if we're headed towards a, a weak, a moderate, or strong El Nino, but uh, the models are kind of pointing out a potential for some moderate to strong El Nino conditions developing here, and which can mean what are the normal conditions somewhere across the West Coast of North America, and a lot of times that can favor California. So we'll be watching that here over the next few months. This is looking at sea surface temperature anomalies. So here we are into April there, and you can see the warm-up occurring. Now look at what was going on in January. You can clearly see the colder than normal conditions here, marking those La Nina conditions across the equatorial Pacific. And as we go on into February, you'll notice that warm water here really bunching up on the coast of South America and then extending outward across the central Pacific Ocean here. So you can clearly see... We go from these very cool conditions here, and we will warm it up rapidly as we most likely head towards an El Nino, which you know is marked by a big tongue of warm water that comes off here. And then when we get that warm water building up here, we know you warm the atmosphere in turn, and then you tend to develop a gradient that's tends to set up here with a southwest flow, a moist southwest flow into the state of California. And that's why El Nino sometimes can bring those above average precipitation chances. During La Nina years, you get that gradient further out across the western Pacific there, and that just tends to uh, develop some ridging here and usually means troughing for a lot of Pacific Northwest, which in turn this year actually included California. So we weren't in El Nino conditions, but we were basically being impacted uh, similar to how the Pacific Northwest gets impacted by La Nina conditions here across the state of California. So when El Nino comes around here, we start to bring a lot of warm water, a lot more moisture to the atmosphere here across some of the eastern Pacific Ocean, and that in turn can start to bring some rainier than normal conditions here to the state of California and even above normal temperatures as well. So we'll watch that as we go the next few months. It's not a slam dunk. It's not a sure thing by any means, and we don't quite know the strength of this El Nino incoming, although it does look very likely we will be in El Nino conditions. So anyway, yeah, hope you guys are liking these videos. We'll keep the watching. Uh, I checked some of the forecast discussions. They're not talking much about the snow melt just yet. We'll watch and see what the models show as we go on to the extended forecast and see if we're trending towards a warm up here as we go through late April. Because you know the snow melt is coming. By the time you get to May, we could, you know, hopefully. Well, let me explain a little bit here. So the longer we stay below normal here, the closer we get to a potential rapid warm up. So if you keep cool during April and don't melt the snowpack much, then you get into May, we can warm things up quite rapidly and we could cause some. Uh, pretty interesting flooding conditions, not favorable. And as you guys saw on the chart there, we start to melt the snowpack quite rapidly as we go on in through May. So uh, I'm hoping for a more gradual melt here, but something that none of us can control. We'll just kind of watch it here in the forecast. But anyway, I hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. If you want that home weather station, click on the link below. The code has changed, so make sure to enter that in there for your 10% off. But other than that, we will talk again here in the next couple of days, and we will monitor the forecast closely. So I'll talk to you guys then.